Well, we're here in the company of Mr. Mark Quato, but we're not up in the north. We're in Roslyn Park. Quait, what, what on earth are we doing here in Roslyn Park? Well, it's raining for one. Um, I came down here expecting it to be a bit brighter than up north, as a lot of people, a lot of these southerners say, but obviously not. Um, but now we're, we're here. Um, I'm uh, ambassador for Multipower um, and a competition that Multipower have been running for um, a coaching class with, with myself and Rosalind Park have obviously won that competition. Okay, and uh, so you ever played here before in your, your long career? I don't think I have. You used no. to be one of the big teams in the yeah. 70s and the 80s? Well, just looking at the names on the board there, the cap previous, uh, previous captains of the club. Andy Ripley, Phil Keith, Phil Keith Roach, don't say Paul Ackford. Uh, we'll, we'll forget about him. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's... Uh, Sorry, Ackers. Obviously, um, a club that's, that's been up there in the past. So anyway, um, Mark, uh, start of a new season, uh, sale going, um, if not brilliantly, at, at least it's you know looking looking a bit better. And of course, we've got um, you on the back of coming back from Australia, having uh, having beaten the Wallabies. I mean, hey, how good is that? You haven't done that before, have you? Not in Australia, done it done it on home turf at Twickenham. But yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually the first time I've played out in Australia for. For one reason or another, injury or whatever else, um, I've I've not actually played out there before, so it was a it was a new experience for me, and, and obviously to, to get the result we did in that second test, particularly the way the first one went as well, was was huge for the for the players, for the coaches, for everyone involved uh, with England. Right, and that means that you're going to go into the autumn. Uh, pretty confident, I would have thought. Yeah. Got a good sort of feel-good factor within the England squad. Definitely, yeah. It's just um, it's just a shame that we've had to wait so long for these fixtures to come around. Um, you know, it's it's going to be knocking on three months, I think, since we we beat Australia in in Sydney. Um, so you know, there's, there's been a lot of a lot of time and a big gap in between the in, in between those that fixture and the Autumn Internationals, but. Like you say, we can we can take a lot of confidence from from that result. Now, don't take this the wrong way, Quakes, but the England back three, you are almost the great grandfather of of the three because you've got a couple of I mean Foden and Ashton. Yeah. Come on, between us, nobody nobody's watching this video. They've got the combined mental age of about eight, haven't they? Mm, true, true. Yeah, Ashy in particular. I think uh, he. I think we'd probably give Foden seven and Ashy one. So yeah, collectively the mental age of an eight-year-old. But now they're uh, they're top boys. They're they're great lads off the field. Um, what do they call you? They actually Ashy in particular likes to call me Conquer for Conquer Tree and uh, taking the mick out of my age. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of light-hearted humour there. Now you know about scoring tries. You've you've scored so many uh, over the years, both for club and country. Uh, you well, you did or you didn't, or you nearly or you didn't score a try in the World Cup final as well, which I, I know you've said to me many times, you, you, nothing will convince you that that wasn't a try. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's just one of them things, isn't it? It's, you know, unfortunately the, the decision went that way, the wrong way. Um, you know, there's nothing that can be done about it now. So, you know... I you demand a rematch. Could do, yeah. It'd be nice to, to get to the final in, in ne uh, next year in, uh, in New Zealand and Score a more convincing try, maybe, and then win the World Cup. I think that that make up for what happened in 07. But you know, I, you know, it's not an issue now. At the time, it was it was frustrating. But you know, I think the minute it, it, it wasn't given, I was over it. You know, that's just the way it goes. Now, other things that interest me about you, sir, is first of all, Quato. Right, you're, you're an out and out northerner, but you have a Spanish name. Am I right in saying it was your great granddad? Came over from northern Spain. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, great, great, uh, great grandparents um, back in turn of the century. Yeah, the yeah. last century. Yeah, yeah. Um, decided for whatever reason to leave Spain, northern Spain, and settle in Cumbria <laughs> of all places. Um, and what did he do there? He set up a fish and chip shop. Right. Whether or not he did or not, I'm not sure. Um, but my my granddad, who's still alive now, um, he's long retired. He's you know knocking on the door of ninety. Um, but he 
he certainly had the, the fish and chip shot. I remember when I was a kid, um, and it's still sort of in the in the family now. It's still, you know, still doing business now. So it's done all right, I think. So you are a Cumbrian. Yeah. You should be playing rugby league, shouldn't you? You're a Cumbrian. Uh, yeah. My um, my other granddad um, played rugby league. Uh, he never played union. He was a league man. But my my dad was always rugby union, which is which is why I ended up playing union. Ah, but there's a twist to this as well because you then moved down to Wolverhampton. Yeah. And you didn't play rugby union for ages and yeah. ages. Football was your sport. Yeah. Well. And you get a lot of rugby players who say they, they are good at football, and you get a lot of rugby players who say they had trials with this yeah, or that, yeah, yeah. but you're actually the real deal. Well, I don't know about that. My mate Saki always claims he could have been a footballer, but I've seen him kick a football and he's useless. Or Danny Kerr? Uh, Danny Kerr's got Sheffield Wednesday. Skills, to be fair, but Dylan Armitage, he again claimed he was on trials with Arsenal and all this stuff, he's terrible. Uh, but no, I, yeah, I, I played a lot of football in my teenage years, really. I moved to Wolverhampton, spent two years at Wolverhampton and actually played a little bit of rugby there. But then it was when we moved to Crewe, um, sort of settled in Crewe, it was, it was all football. And it wasn't until uh, 17, 18 that, that rugby took off for me, really. And then the story goes that you, you were a footballer, but they, uh, the, the team were two, two or three men short, the rugby team, and yeah, you came up. That, more than that. We, it was in my final year, upper six at school, and the majority of the lads played played football. And there was a couple of guys that were that were rugby lads, and they were organising a game against the local school. And I think they only had about eight eight rugby lads, so they came to to the football boys and, and asked if we'd fill in. And uh, and I was one of them, and I, and I did. I can't remember if I played at centre or in the wing that day, but I scored a few tries. And a, a school teacher at the time, who's now a, a family friend, as it happens, um, was watching Welsh, Welshy, um, Lindsay Purcell, his name is. He actually sort of spotted me play, thought I had potential, and cut a long story short, ended up writing a few letters, letters of recommendation, and so invited me to train, and it, it, it sort of went from there. Well, it's not been too bad a career, but I suggest that the best is still to come, perhaps, because yeah. this England team, Looking pretty good. Yeah, it's it's looking really good, and um, you know, hopefully, you know, I've done quite a few things, and, you know, achieved quite a few decent uh, decent things in the game over the years. But maybe with with England, um, you know, not achieved anything solid yet. You know, we've had good performances here and there, and, and beaten a lot of the top sides in the world in one-off games, but. You know, never won a Six Nations or a Grand Slam or obviously a World Cup. So it'd be, you know, it'd be nice to to achieve something with England before before I finish. And um, you know, I don't think I've got that many years left in me. So it is. Well, you speak to Chris Ash, and you definitely haven't got too many years well, left in you. Speak to him, and I won't make the next World Cup. But <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm still feeling good. Um, you know, I remember speaking to Philippe when when he was at Sale. That's a Philippe Saint Andre. Philippe yeah. Saint Andre, yeah, now, now at Toulon, but obviously a famous yeah. French winger, you know, captain, captain France, you know, 75 times or cap for 75 times. And, you know, he, he, I remember him saying to me that he, his best rugby was between 31 and 33, and, you know, I know it's, it's different now, with times have changed, but, you know, particularly off the back of last year, I think, you know, last year was. Probably my my best and most consistent season ever for both Sale and England. So, you know, hopefully I can continue that. You do realise you could have been an absolute total legend of Spanish rugby. <laughs> you could have had 300 caps. I could have been. Is that one of the biggest mistakes of your life? Maybe. Yeah, you never know, dear. But uh, yeah, the Spanish aren't too big on the rugby.